They want your dignity. They want your pride, but mostly they want your money. Businesses want your money. That's just fact. At the end of the day, that's how a company maintains its survival, by bringing in a steady supply of greenbacks. So keep an eye out for these 15 sneakiest food business tactics you never noticed scamming you. The vicarious goal fulfillment phenomena. Vicarious thrills, you know? Yeah. This next one is a doozy and truly, truly demonstrates just how bizarre and impressionable the human psyche can actually be. The mere sight of a healthy food option on a fast food menu can make you feel better about your own food choice, even if you just got something that by all standards is not even close to healthy. Why? It's healthy. Just seeing some leafy greens on a menu can evoke a little something called vicarious goal fulfillment. A professor at Duke led research that concluded that even considering the healthier option without even ordering it can conjure up positive emotions in a customer. It basically makes you feel like you've taken some small action towards that goal. Wow, psychologically, we are tricky beings. The tracker that deceives. How much longer do we wait? When it comes to the food order tracker, looks can be deceiving. Consider yourself at home waiting intently on that pizza to arrive. Well, you can watch as your pizza goes through the steps to be prepared for you on the tracker and get a pretty good idea of when that pie will be at your door. But the restaurant staff can actually manipulate what you see to make it seem like your order is further along than it actually is. Why? Just why? <laughs> it's as simple as saying that an order is passing quality inspection when it is simply sitting on a heated rack waiting for your driver. It can be dispatched prior to when a driver is even ready to pick it up. So keep this tactic in mind next time your order is taking just a wee bit too long. No dollar sign, no problem. They just want all our money. When you go to a restaurant, often the first thing you will do is look at the menu. And in your quest to satisfy your hunger, your eyes will naturally make a beeline for the food that appeals to you most. But the second thing that you'll notice? Well, your eyes will probably drift to the prices. One thing that you may or may not have recognized, though, is that many food industry businesses will leave out the dollar sign denoting the actual monetary value value of a given dish. And you won't even notice it. So while you scan the menu for your meal of choice, for a moment you can take your mind off of the funds you must hand over in exchange for the goods and services rendered. It's a small psychological tactic that has an effect. In the moment, it may feel like no dollar sign, no problem. But in reality, it's no dollar sign, sneaky, sneaky strategy. Eye contact. Monty, look me in the eye. You've probably heard the saying, out of sight, out of mind. And honestly, that works like a charm with a breakup. But the opposite is true, both when it comes to our exes and our beloved food. We tend to cave to our cravings particularly quickly when we can actually see them, and the food industry knows this. And we know it! So being the sneaksters that they are, what they do is they place the treats at children's eye level, but name brand products are typically placed at the eye level height of the average woman, which is five foot four. The establishment will normally place the less expensive products either low on the bottom shelves or high on the top ones. There is method to the madness, and this one is definitely calculated indeed. Down to the inch. Freebie bread. I don't want to live in a society where the pre-meal bread isn't free. When you sit down for a nice meal and there's an inviting bread basket just waiting to be torn into and buttered in front of you, normally we all rejoice. The freebie bread is a genius but yet still sneaky business practice on behalf of restaurant establishments. Let's look at facts. When you receive that free doughy goodness, your demeanor changes. I'm a whole different person. First of all, you you are partially satisfied, so you are probably more affable and friendly as a result. Secondly, if the restaurant treats you with generosity, they hope that you will treat them in kind. The logic is, we give you this bread and chances are that you will order more food and give your server a bigger tip. And well, when you think about it, who doesn't like free stuff? Rocket science? We think not. 
It's all in the presentation. You look terrible. I look awesome. Grill marks evoke memories of legitimately grilled burgers, which mentally conjures up the taste. So the mere visual of grilled marks on a beef patty, even if they aren't real, can trick you into thinking that they're tastier burgers. This psychological trick is high on the sneaky business tactic spectrum because this is pretty much a trick of the eye. In art, you can create optical illusions using realistic images, making certain objects appear 3D when in fact they are not. Magic. Well, the faux burn marks are kind of like that, as they allude to a grilling process that never took place. Shocking, we know. Also, restaurants will even infuse smoke flavoring to make it taste like it came straight off the barbecue. So now that you know about this widely practiced business strategy, keep your eye out for other illusions. Size Matters Shopping Cart Edition It's never big enough. Shopping carts are designed to make our lives easier, but they're also designed to get us to spend more. Since we only have two hands, we get to use the cart to push our desired goods around versus carrying them all over the store and finally to the cash. Well, did you know that those grocery store shopping carts are actually way bigger than they used to be? What? I need more. Like, since the 70s, they are approximately three times bigger. While, yes, there are typically two different shopping shopping cart sizes to choose from at the grocery store, you are more likely to save more by just skipping the cart altogether. So in essence, the more room there is in the cart, the higher the chance that you are going to spend more at the store. The old switcheroo. Relax, Stuart. It's classic switcheroo. This one is basically the old switcheroo. For those who aren't familiar with this ancient idiom, the old switcheroo refers to the bait and switch. And apparently, if it's unlikely that you're going to notice that a restaurant is serving you the wrong item, they just might do it. So, for instance, a hypersensitive or perhaps otherworldly bean might be able to detect the difference between when they are served light mayo versus the regular stuff. This is wrong depending on what is most cost-effective for the restaurant. It all comes down to dollars at the end of the day, and if giving you some watered-down version of what you asked for is going to save the company a few bucks, well, you better get your inspector gadget on, because chances are they're gonna do it. Food, mood, music. I hate it. Music should just be fun. In most businesses that deal with the public, the music is carefully curated by a team that believes that those particular songs will increase the amount of money spent in a given establishment. It has been said that music in a restaurant can act as an appetizer and reduce irritation while waiting patiently for your order. Just relax. If the music wasn't playing, you would hear the clamoring of the kitchen and clanking of utensils as other patrons enjoy their meals. And interestingly enough, some studies have even shown that slow tempo music can even keep a diner eating for longer. Upbeat music, however? Well, you yeah, might as well be aerobicizing your mouth at that point, because supposedly our bites and sips per minute increase with the tempo of the music. The Strategic Fast Food Menu We need a strategy. I have a strategy. Everything about the fast food menu is designed to make you eat, 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 which in business terms really means spend, spend, spend. First of all, there's the bold and bright menu with aesthetically pleasing and misrepresentative photographs of some of the big ticket items. The writing on the menu is typically pretty tiny, making it difficult to even read. This includes the prices of the items. Smart, right? The restaurant chains make it so that your eyes go to the food, not the cost of the food. They even place the more expensive items on the left side, which is where we start reading from in the English language, ensuring that you get a glimpse of those bad boys first. We could go on with the lengths that fast food restaurants go to on their menu alone to persuade the customer to order and order well, but we'd be here all day. Highly strategic store design. I am very, very sneaky, sir. 
I see that. Did you know that apparently women and men shop differently? When it comes to grocery shopping, women are the more dilly-dally style shopper who will peruse and look around, while men are typically there to get what they need and get out. Grocery stores had to account for this male shopping tendency to get in and get out. Smart. Will do. So what you'll find is that supermarkets will place their most popular brands and items in the middle regions of the aisles, requiring all shoppers to walk past tons of other items on the way. The food industry has literally thought of everything to get us to spend our dough. Sneaky, sneaky. Sticks, stones, and words galore. I think I can paraphrase that. You probably remember hearing the phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Way back in the day, well, we're pretty sure that in this 2021 environment, most of us understand that words actually can have a tremendous impact. We are wiser. We get that words have power. I got power. And when it comes to the food industry, words can make or break a product or given menu item. Between the descriptive adjectives and directive verbs, word choices can literally entice a customer into giving something a go, especially when they are new to a product. So while, yeah, sticks and stones definitely hurt, words can be used covertly in business to influence your purchasing decisions. Food photography catfish. I guess I expected something different from your photo. We've all known how a photo can be misleading. Heck, there's an entire online dating concept called catfishing. But what about misleading people with photos when it comes to their food? We want what we see on the menu, pretty much exactly as it is on the menu. And when there's a photo, we want to chow down on the exact same thing, period. It's important for us to know, though, that those photographs are not real, but more so an altered visual representation. So it's fake. There's an entire business surrounding food photography styling, and everything down to the color and consistency of the ketchup is manipulated on the day of the photo shoot, and not to mention heavily photoshopped afterward. Besides that food that you see photographed on the menu, there's a chance that a lot of the ingredients are not even real. Milk in the back. Didn't I just buy this milk? This one makes logical sense to us from a business perspective, but the manipulation is strong with this one. So most people put items like milk or eggs on the top of their grocery shopping lists. Then at the supermarket, they tend to walk to the back of the store to find them. In the process of finding the desired products, a given customer will encounter more desirable products. Let's buy this baby. And then even more desirable products along the way. This is the anticipated trajectory of the consumer, that they will walk straight to the back. And when they do, chances are that they will pick up more items along the way, even if they don't necessarily need them. Kinda makes you feel like a mouse with some cheese in a maze, doesn't it? Stretching the facts. I'm not lying. I'm just not telling the truth. We've all heard of people who stretch the truth, bending it to their advantage as they see fit. Well, label padding is when you try to make the label on your product appear perhaps healthier by listing the components that are actually healthy inside, even if the amounts in which they exist are practically minuscule. Not enough. The label is really supposed to be there to inform the consumer of exactly what is inside a given product, not to make a company look better. So pay attention when you're reading those labels, because chances are there's a bit of game playing going on, and you don't want to be the pawn in this equation. Order up more great videos, just tap or click. And hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.